Today on Beer is TV, we're going to explore some of the changes in tap water quality and treatment over the last decade. Hi, I'm Ryan, host of Beer is TV, where each week we cover a new topic related to reefing. This week we're going to talk about some of the challenges that have recently developed for RODI equipment in reefing, as well as how to deal with these changes. A lot of things have changed in the last decade, and a lot of what the industry thought we knew and some of the technology is pretty outdated. Using purified RODI water has really become a mainstay of reefing. It makes sense because when it comes down to it, none of us are really trying to maintain reef tanks. What we're really trying to maintain is water. A healthy reef tank full of brilliantly colored corals is just a benefit of maintaining pristine water. Maintaining high quality water standards really starts with the quality of the water that we use for water changes and evaporation and why RODI has become such a staple in reefing. There are really two reasons that we use RODI. First, because we want to remove chlorine and other disinfectants, which are extremely toxic. But more importantly, we want to remove other impurities in the water, like nitrate, phosphate, ammonia, and a whole host of other things that can cause real issues in the aquarium. So what's happened the last decade with disinfectants? First, there's been a huge shift from chlorine as a standard disinfectant to chloramines, which are chlorine reacted with ammonia to create a much stabler disinfectant compound. This stability is really attractive to municipal water supplies because it's effective further down the water treatment path and produces fewer disinfection byproducts like chloroform, which are now heavily regulated by the EPA. The last study I saw on this was completed in 2011, and over 25% or one in four of you are using water treated with chloramines. We're now getting close to 2015 here, and chloramine use is still rising rapidly, so I wouldn't be surprised if it was now one in three reefers who now has to properly treat for chloramines. Because they're relatively new, chloramines are not well understood, and there's a huge myth floating out there that a standard carbon block is an okay solution for chloramines. Amazingly, almost no one in our hobby has actually tested this stuff for themselves, so a lot of misinformation floats around. I can tell you definitively right now that even a high quality standard carbon block like this one is more or less a cylindrical waste of time and has no value treating for chloramines. To give you an example of exactly how worthless a standard carbon block is at treating for chloramines, we took a popular one micron carbon block, which is good for 20,000 gallons treating for chlorine at one gallon a minute, and put it to the test with our water, which contains chloramines. Basically, everyone will concede you're not going to get 20,000 gallons, but the common perception is they'll still work reasonably well. However, at one gallon per minute and just 200 gallons, we had 60% breakthrough. We're not even seeing one hundredth of the expected lifespan before we're seeing 60% of the chloramines passing through the filter, and we should obviously replace the carbon block. Once you consider wastewater, you might have to buy a new carbon block almost every water change, which is ridiculous. However, there are specialized chloramine carbon blocks, which cost a few bucks more, but will last 10 to 20 times as long and a pretty obvious value. It really makes no sense at all to use a standard carbon block now that these specialized blocks are widely available because they'll save the average reef for money almost immediately, increase the quality of water they use, and protect the more expensive membrane from the oxidizing effects chloramines have, which will ruin the membrane. So what else is new in the last decade in RODI? Just in general, we're dealing with more water pollution and depending on where you get your water from, it might affect you. Some of the more dangerous things like volatile organic compounds or petroleum byproducts from increased use of insecticides, pesticides, fertilizer, farm runoff, new gas collection practices, pollute river and groundwater sources, some of which we're concerned about directly and others because they contain high concentrations of contaminants like phosphate. Many of these things are going to pass through the standard filter array of a sediment filter, carbon block, RO membrane, and single DI resin canister. So how do we deal with this? Well, before this gets too scary, half of you probably don't need to be concerned because your water supply is probably free of the more troublesome contaminants and isn't utilizing chloramines as a disinfectant, so the standard array of filter is just fine. For the other half of you watching this where you might be concerned about the quality of your water supply or know your city's using chloramines, let's talk about what you can do to deal with these new challenges presented to us. The first change is the type of carbon block you should use. There are a variety of ways carbon blocks differ from each other, including pore size, surface area, newer technology that increases oxidation sites, and special treatments. But one of the biggest differences is simply the volume of carbon and total contact time the carbon has to remove the contaminants. 
We cut these two in half to give you a visual representation of how one carbon block simply is not the same as the next. Visually, you can see there simply isn't a comparison. As a reefer, it's nice when the difference can be seen so easily. There are a variety of carbon blocks on the market designed to treat for chloramines. For the most part, they're all high surface area one micron filters with a larger volume of carbon to increase contact time. And typically, they've been treated to increase oxidation sites, which is the most important part of a filter designed to treat for chloramines. It's these oxidation sites that help help break the bond between chlorine and ammonia. These oxidation sites also help reduce the residual ammonia the RO membrane and DI resin has to deal with by promoting a reaction which results in nitrogen gas rather than ammonia. We spent a good portion of the last year researching and testing carbon blocks from all the world's leaders in catalytic carbon, which is a type of carbon that has those increased oxidation sites. The manufacturer we selected to work with outperformed all the catalytic carbon and block manufacturers by two to three times and really represents the latest in activated carbon technology. What's nice is the things that make this block exceptionally good at chloramines also make it even better at chlorine and chemical contaminants as well, and why we call it a universal carbon block. This block is good for up to 35,000 gallons with chlorine, and after all of our testing, I can confidently say it's the best in our industry at dealing with either disinfectant. Because these carbon blocks do cost a bit more, it's more important to protect them properly, which is why we suggest using the RO.Z depth sediment filters to protect them and extend their usable life. These filters have a much larger void volume and almost twice the dirt holding capacity as a standard sediment filter and will do a much better job of protecting the carbon blocks. Again, what's nice is you can identify the additional void volume and true graded density just by squeezing one. They're much softer than the lower quality imported sediment filters. The next biggest change we suggest is dual DI canisters. DI resin is used to remove many of the harder to remove contaminants which commonly pass through the RO membrane like phosphate. Sadly, many of these contaminants like phosphate can also pass through the DI resin if the contact time isn't long enough. One of the things the average reefer probably doesn't think about is the DI resin cartridge depletes from the bottom up, which means that a brand new one has around 10 inches of charged resin and a fairly long contact time. However, a 50% depleted resin canister only has half the contact time and a 75% depleted canister only has 25% of the contact time. You can see where this is going and why performance will degrade on the hardest to remove items like phosphate as the cartridge is consumed. With a dual DI system, we don't have to wait for both to be depleted. The idea is to change the first cartridge when it's depleted, and the second cartridge always ensures that water has to pass through one almost fully charged cartridge and maximizes the contact time. If you're motivated, you can also swap them so the second one is always brand new as well. In a perfect world, uh, canisters on a dual DI stage will be side mounted, which allows you to install a TDS meter between the canisters to get a more accurate reading of the water entering the first DI, as well as after the first stage and after the second. The color change is a pretty good representation of depletion, but the TDS meter will let you know for sure. The nice thing about all these changes is they're all pretty easy to apply to pretty much any older RODI system that you already have. If your system already has a single sediment filter and two carbon blocks, all you need to do is change out the carbon blocks with the new universal blocks next time you change filters. If you have just a single carbon block, you can add a canister before the unit and use that for the sediment filter and the two pre-filter canisters on the RO system for two new universal carbon blocks. If you have a single DI stage, you can always purchase additional DI stage to get the same benefits as well. One important component of all this is simply knowing what your city is treating your water with. You can call your city, but one of the easiest ways to identify what type of disinfectant they use is a simple total and free chlorine test strip like this one. Total chlorine is a measurement of all types of chlorine, including both chloramines and chlorine. Free chlorine is just a measurement of chlorine alone. Chloramines isn't considered free chlorine because it's chlorine attached to ammonia and not free. A reading of up to five parts per million total chlorine and a close to or matching reading of free chlorine indicates your city's using chlorine. If your test strips read up to five parts per million total chlorine and close to or zero free chlorine, the city's almost certainly using chloramines. If they're both zero, you're probably on well water. One last tip I'd like to share is if your water supply is being treated with chloramines, you might really want to consider adding the Water Saver 150 gallon per day upgrade kit or purchasing one of the Water Saver models because it will effectively double the amount of water you can produce off a single set of carbon blocks, which can save a fortune in filter replacement and depending on where you live, maybe even the water bill. 
We're currently building a chloramine database on the website to help reefers identify what their city uses. You can help us, your local friends, and reefing community in general. Please take a moment to share what your city uses in the comments area down below, or better yet, share your results with your friends and local community on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Hashtag I'm the 30% if your city uses chloramines, or hashtag I'm the 70% if your city uses chlorine. If you have any questions about the recent changes to water supplies or advice for fellow reefers, check out the comments area down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because we release two new reefing videos like this one every week. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.